Let's use Unity to put our games on phones. I've covered most of this uh, through various aspects of my other videos, but I think it's about time that I put it into a just straightforward, consistent how-to series of videos. So first, let's start by using Unity to put our game onto an Android phone, and then we'll go on and show how to do this for iOS. So to start with, let's just install Unity. I'm gonna assume you already have the Unity Hub. I see I have an update to do. Uh, let me do that. All right, we're back. I'm on Unity Hub 352, which should be fine. I wanna show you like from the beginning. So let's install a new version. I'm gonna go with, uh, usually recommend the latest LTS version. Uh, if you're starting a new project, that should be fine. So I'm gonna do that right there. I'm gonna choose that one. And as I do, I know I'm gonna be doing Android build support. So I'm going to select the Android as well as these checks for the OpenJDK and the Android SDK and NDK tools. This is not the first version of Unity I'm installing on this computer and it is not the first time I'm adding Android support. So I actually already have a copy of the JDK and a copy of the SDK and the NDK on my hard drive from previous installations. And there is a way I can set it up to use those previous installs. Let's face it, you're probably watching this video because you're new at this, so let's keep things simple and we'll just let Unity manage this for us by putting a copy of the correct SDK and the correct JDK uh, in the same folder that they're gonna install this version of Unity. So I make those selections. I've already got uh, Visual Studio set up and it knows that, so it's not gonna download an extra copy of that. And I don't want the documentation downloaded um, I'm gonna use online services for that, so I check that. Um, what else, I mean, I'm not gonna do anything else with this version, so I'm not gonna choose any of the other uh, uh, add-ins. Oh. And we're installing. I'll come back when that's done. All right, the install is finished. So let's open a project. I'm just gonna choose something very simple for uh, the demonstration purposes, my Hello World project. I'm gonna change it to my new version that I just downloaded, and I'm gonna make sure that I have selected Android so that I don't have to do that after I open the project. Okay, go. Yeah, and it prompts me to change the version. It will prompt me again. Yes, to change the version. Um, I have found that when you are migrating forward, there's very rarely any problems with small jumps forward, such as this from 2022.3.0 to 2022.3.10. Unlikely to have any problems. Uh, many dev teams are deeply afraid of changing their version. Um, if you make small changes in the forward direction, it's rarely a problem. Occasionally, it can be difficult to go backwards. So the project is open, and as you can see in the build settings, it is already in Android mode. If it is not in Android mode for you yet, select Android, and there should be a switch platform button down here. It'll restart the editor in Android mode and re-import your resources for Android development. Okay, we're in Android mode, and we have a little project here. Um, just explore the project real quick. It is this Hello World project with a press me. And then we've got this little cursor that you can drag around and press me takes me back to there. All right, that's what we wanna do. We wanna put it on the phone. So first step, let's just do cable connect on our phone, right? So we're gonna plug this in we're going to plug it into the computer. The device is connected on the cable. Let's go to the build settings. And the device listed right here as run device is not shown, right? It doesn't show up. We can't put anything on our phone until we put the phone in developer mode. 
So let's take our Android phone and put it in developer mode. So first open up your settings on your Android phone and uh, on mine, all the way down at the bottom, we'll find about. You'll note later on, we're gonna see at the very bottom, a developer mode options and that's not here until you turn on developer mode. So we'll go to the about and then we're gonna to go to the software information and then on here you'll find build number and this is kind of hilarious what you do is you tap it seven times and then you need to authorize that and developer mode has been turned on so if we go back now to our main settings page and we look at the very bottom developer options is there so now we're in developer mode and what we'll want is we will want USB debugging to allow us to debug over this connected cable. And then that notices that it's attached to a computer and we're going to allow. All right, uh, I think that's really all we need to do. The phone is now in developer mode. Now that the phone is in developer mode, we can hit refresh on here and we'll see the phone listed as a device as one of our possible run devices and that is because the phone is in developer mode the phone is plugged into the computer and i have authorized that each time you plug in the phone to the computer when it's in developer mode the phone will ask you for confirmation to authorize and once you've done all those things this will come up now, once in a while, I will find that I plug in my phone and the and, and Unity's run device list does not include it, that it does not appear as a, an authorized device, despite the fact that it was working fine yesterday, today it's, it's not gonna work. So there is a quick fix for that, kind of like just force a reset on this thing. So what we'll do, if, if Unity cannot connect to your phone, is we will unplug it go to our developer options on your settings menu we will scroll down to that um usb debugging which i've lost now okay scroll down to your usb debugging disable it revoke usb debugging authorizations that will just erase any of those pre uh pre-accepted computers we're going to turn USB debugging back on. Okay. And then we will plug the phone back in. That should once again prompt you to allow this computer. And now that is sort of just refreshed the relationship between the phone and the computer. And now if we hit refresh on this, our phone should be listed. We are now attached. Let's deploy the build onto the phone. Let's just try what happens if we build and run. It will prompt you for a build folder on where to put your APK file. Now, this is, you're not gonna browse to the phone. You're gonna save the APK on your computer hard drive and then, and then it will send that over to the phone, install it on the phone and launch it. So you'll have a copy on your hard drive that has been put onto the phone. That's what we're doing here. Here's a little note that is immensely helpful. I am not going to push my build into my source control. And you can see I'm using git for my source control. I don't want this build included. And I could try to manage that with ignores or I could just put builds somewhere that's not underneath my, uh, my git repo. So that will just solve it. Um, I'm gonna call this hello world and it is not under my git repo all right and you can see that after building it copied the file over and here we are running the game on the phone we can uh, do the press me and then here's the the touch feature and go back uh, let's go ahead and unplug the phone just so i can uh, show this the rotation rotation is automatically supported so we can work in um, we can work in landscape mode we can work portrait mode uh, etc 
Don't know what that's going to look like on the recording. We'll see here when I hit the edit. So there you go. We have deployed our app onto the phone using the USB cable. We did not implement any way to, to end the game here from within the app. So you'll just want to use your standard techniques to kill it using the OS like you would any other application that you've chosen. And I think everyone knows how to do that. Uh, the one last thing I do want to point out is you're going to be iterating on your project as you make incremental changes. I recommend that you always delete the app. Uninstall the old version from the phone before you install the next iteration just to be sure. Sometimes uh, I have seen the phone will reject the new installation if there's already an app with that name uh, and that's a complication you don't need to deal with and also uh, sometimes after it has failed for some reason you'll then launch your app and think that it is working but actually you're just looking at an older version um, and finally uh, when we get to app bundles there's another complication with old installs that uh, we'll want to deal with. So just delete the thing, uninstall the old version before you install the new one. And let's call that a video for today. The next step I'm thinking is how do we then take that app we've made and deploy to our phone and upload that to the Google Play Store so that we can share it with our internal testers and then ultimately release the game. So uh, I'll get started on that one next time.